What's the meaning of chi in Italiano? That was so dumb. Uh, I don't know, let's find out. Ciao ragazzi, bentornati e benvenuti a una volta. <ride> uh, benvenuti a questo episodio, credo che è il numero 7, I believe it's number 7, uh, Ask Man Italiano. And today I have a question from Juha, whom you have already heard from in the previous episode. And he has another really good question that it's a little bit advanced. So watch the episode, even if you're a beginner, but don't let it scare you because you get some information that will help you. But stop wherever it gets too scary, okay? <laughs> now, before I play the question, I'm going to remind you, as usual, that you can go to italymidiesy.com where you can download a PDF and it's never been as vital as today because there's a bunch of sentences in today's episode. I won't have time to really spend too much time on each one of them because I'm trying to keep this down in under 10 minutes. Did I manage last week? Uh, let's see if I can do it this time, but uh, my idea is to share as much knowledge as possible with you in the shortest amount of time in a way that it sticks. I'm not interested in making a one minute video with phrases because they don't teach you anything. I'm sorry about that. And today's question is actually an amazing example of why I'm so happy that I'm doing this because I can see how much it's helping you guys and you keep telling me in your comments, which is great. But Let's hear the question and then I'll tell you why I'm saying all this. Good morning, Manu. Uh, my name is Juha. I've been studying Italian for a little bit past one year now. Um, I live in uh, Sydney, Australia. And yeah, I would like to know the meaning of chi, C-I. Uh, we see it in a lot of... Um, phrases and, and conversations, people say uh, ci sono, uh, ciò fame, uh, things like this, um, uh, di solito ci metto dieci minuti, uh, see what's this ci, what does it mean in, 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 in sentences like that, um, I understand that uh, ci also means noi when it, when it becomes a reflexive verb at the end of verbs, or at the beginning, uh, however, I'm not talking about those ones. Uh, I'm talking about these other things. Um, and don ci credo, you know, what is the what is the meaning here? So I can start to use it, and please help me uh, as a beginning, and and, and perhaps because uh, uh, I I keep hearing it all the time on the radio and uh, in people's conversations. So um, that is exactly what I would like to know. Thank you. Perfetto, ok. Why did I say that it's a great question? First of all, congratulazioni Juha, you are really doing a great job because whenever I, I when I hear a question that it's it's got solid grounds, I can see that you are doing a good job because you're doing all the right things, you're listening to stuff. And that's something actually I want to talk about quickly is why am I happy to be doing this show and why is it in English? if you're learning Italian? Well, because it's totally pointless for somebody to force themselves to understand the theory of a language in the language if they're not fluent already. You know, for example, I don't know, with my Spanish, it's at a level where I could improve my Spanish watching Spanish things, and I do. But with uh, other languages, you know, like to say Auslan, I've just started I've just started picking up uh, Australian Sign Language. It's just not good enough for me to sit there and watch somebody show me the theory of Auslan and do it in Auslan because I'm not going to understand. So, Juha is doing the right things because he's exposing himself to as much Italian as he can. Radio shows, probably podcasts, TV, movies. He's reading in Italian. He's doing all the things that he needs to do to hear Italian, to get used to the sounds, to produce the sounds and to uh, observe how Italian works and get used to it, but then it's coming to people like me, not necessarily just me. You know, uh, I'm honored that you come to me, but, uh, and I can explain to you in English, which I know it's not your native language, but you live in Australia, so obviously is 
align with us for your communication. So I'm assuming that my audience is native speaker of English, not necessarily, but their English has to be good because I use English to help you understand the Italian side that you can go practice for now, mostly uh, get exposed to Italian from other sources, but very soon I'll be bringing a lot of Italian content to you with subtitles, which is something that's highly, highly needed. There's not enough resources for, the, for that. Anyway, let me get into the answer. Otherwise, this episode is going to be endless because it's already quite a big topic. And I'm already quite late. Allora. Now, so chi has a bunch of meanings. You already talked about that you're not interested in this, but I have to talk to everybody out there and explain how many meanings can chi have. It can have a million meanings. It's just crazy how many meanings it can have. So it has the meaning of us, as in you and me. And that's the one you don't want to know about. You are. But loro ci amano. Loro ci amano. What does it mean? I'll, let you, I'll give you some time to think about the translation. Okay, If you know enough Italian for that, you should know this one. Or you could know. Loro, they, amano, they love. Ci, they love us. We put the ci, the us, before the verb in Italian, as you notice. Tu ci vedi. You see us, okay? It could also have the meaning of to us or for us, so therefore as an indirect object pronoun, if you know the grammar terms, it just means for the recipient. So, lei ci dà un libro. Lei ci dà un libro. She gives, she, lei dà, un libro, a book, to us. That she means she gives us a book. Lei ci dà un libro. She gives a book to us. Ci hanno portato un tiramisu. Ci hanno portato un tiramisu. So who's the subject here? It's they. Why? Because it's hanno portato. And hanno portato means they have brought to us. That's the chi. They brought us a tiramisu. So that's the meaning of us or to us or for us. Okay. It can also have the meaning of ourselves or each other. This is when it's used with reflexive verbs or reciprocal verbs. I know they're big words. Eventually, I'll make videos for every, every one of these things. Uh, for example, when I say noi ci laviamo, noi ci laviamo, see the subject is noi, it cannot mean we wash us. It's just because it doesn't, that's not grammatically correct to say we wash us, we wash ourselves. Okay? Ci, so noi ci amavamo. Noi ci amavamo. That's an imperfetto. If you might know the imperfetto, it's a past tense. And it's we used to love each other. Why? Because we wouldn't say we, we, we used to love us or we used to love ourselves. You know, cool, but you know, in most cases it means we used to love each other. Noi ci ricordiamo. That's a tricky one and I put it there for a reason because it translates with we remember. That she doesn't translate at all, which leads into my next slide. Okay, or future slides. Now, what are the verbs that we're using here? We're using three verbs that are different from lavare, which means to wash, amarsi, which, sorry, amare, which means to love, and ricordare, which means to remind somebody to do something. We, here we're dealing with three verbs that are lavarsi, to wash oneself, amarsi, to love oneself or to love each other, and ricordarsi, which means to remember. So in Italian, to remember is a reflexive verb. In English, it isn't. Therefore, it's going to have that chi, that reflexive pronoun, which would be chi in the case of us. And it wouldn't in English. So you wouldn't translate to we remember ourselves because that's not what we're saying. We're just saying we remember. But in Italian, it's noi ci ricordiamo, we remember. So that's a tricky one. Now, but that's still the easy side of the story. Because chi can also mean there, not as in, look at, look at there. You don't use this chi at the end of a sentence with the emphasis of, oh, I left it there. It's not that chi. If you mean that chi, that there, like as in at the end of a sentence or with the emphasis, the word is la, L-A with an accent, or li, L-I with an accent, okay? And if you download the PDF, you'll have all this in writing, okay? So I can't put everything on the whiteboard right now. So please do download the PDF. 
uh, it's the meaning of there when it's replacing a place within a sentence. For example, quando vai a Roma? Quando vai a Roma? When are you going to Rome? Answer, ci vado domani. Ci vado domani. I go there tomorrow. That ci in this case means a Roma, to Rome. Okay? We put it before the verb and it means I go there tomorrow. Okay? Sometimes we don't even translate in English. Okay? Like you say I go tomorrow. But in, Eng in Italian you'd say I go there tomorrow. Perché hai la borsa? Perché hai la borsa? Why do you have your bag on you? Kind of thing. And the answer, per metterci i soldi. Per metterci i soldi. Here I'm showing you another cool usage of that ci, meaning there, as in the place that I've just mentioned, or that was just mentioned. Perché hai la borsa? Whether you have a bag? Per metterci i soldi, to put money in it, to put money in there. You see what that's doing? Cool. Nel frigo c'è una birra. Is that right? Yeah, nel frigo c'è una birra. Nel frigo c'è una birra. What's, why, why did I put this here? We already talked about c'è in another episode. Well, because c'è means there is. So, e means is, and that c apostrophe, it's ci, which has been shortened to c apostrophe, and it means there is. Like, should be, it should. Like, there is a beer. Per cena c'è la pizza. For dinner there's pizza. And then the final one is ti ci porto domani. Ti ci porto domani. I will take you there tomorrow. There, wherever it was mentioned before, okay? So that's another very common meaning or usage of ci. Now, this one is a tricky one. It can also mean about it. Okay, so, it's a tricky, really tricky one. Chi prepara la cena? Chi prepara la cena? Who's making dinner? Who's preparing dinner? And you could say, ci penso io. Ci penso io. Literally is I think about it, but Italian will say to mean I'll look after, uh, I'll deal with it. I'll, I'll deal with, th with this. Okay. But ci penso is I'll think about it. Not as in I'll reflect about it, but I'll, I'll take care of it. Okay. I'll think about it. I don't know. It doesn't work in English. Eh? <laughs> uh, all right. Another one. Ci pensi che domani saremo in Italia? Ci pensi che domani saremo in Italia? What do you think it means? So, who, who, uh, who's talking? Well, I think I'm talking. Who am I talking to? To you, because I'm saying pensi. So, do you think? But there's a chi. Hmm. Do you think it doesn't work? Yeah, I, I know the answer. I'm just giving you time. Uh, ci pensi che domani siamo in Italia? So, it's, this one is like, can you believe that tomorrow will be in Italy? But why are we using... Ci pensi? It's like, can you think about it? Would you believe that? Like, can you think about the fact that we're going to be in Italy tomorrow? So it's really tricky usage of ci. And this one is, you, hearing it a lot will help you get it. The reason I'm making this video is because ci can have so many meanings. You want to get down to the ones that you can understand, master, and then Whenever you come across a chi that you don't understand, based on the next three slides, oh my God, this video is going to be so long, uh, but you will be able to say, okay, it's not any of the ones that I think that I thought could be. It must be one of the ones that I'm not sure, but I know what options I have, and then you'll be able to understand what that chi means, hopefully. Let's finish up this slide. Vieni con noi al cinema. Vieni con noi al cinema. Are you coming to the cinema with us? Vieni con noi al cinema and I say fammi ci pensare, fammi ci pensare, fammi ci pensare. Let me think about it. So that ci again means about it. It's in that position because I don't have time to explain, but fammi is an imperative, it's an order, so we put the pronoun after an order, whereas usually we put it before, okay? Again, don't let this scare you and confuse you. And finally, the best slide that we were waiting for is chi has no meaning. <laughs> meaning, it just doesn't translate. It just, it's there to create a new verb with new meaning, okay? So these are the ones that will get you lost the most because you either know that infinitive or that verb with the chi or you don't understand it. Because 
For example, crederci. Now you probably know the verb credere. What does credere mean? Fake watch. But, uh, credere is to believe. Crederci, similar, but it means to believe in something. See, in English you believe in something, whereas in Italian you believe ci. Okay. <laughs> Metterci, this one is crazy. You probably know what mettere means, mettere. To put. Metterci, it's the time that it takes for something to happen. Totally different. You, you hear mette or ci metto, you think it's putting something, it's not putting anything. So the ci will really change the meaning. Another one, avercela. Avercela, you can probably see the verb avere, which means to have. But now we are attaching the che, which is a variation of ci, that has changed to che to sound better because you're also adding la. If you know what la is, in this context is a direct object pronoun and it means it. So literally we're saying to have there it, to have it there, I don't know, doesn't translate and I don't want you to translate it in your head because avercela simply means to be upset at somebody. So these are like, it's the closest thing that Italian has to phrasal verbs. If you know phrasal verbs, you know how difficult they are for a, a, a learner of English to get, that these are our phrasal verbs. So you are, you're suffering twice because you are dealing with the English phrasal verbs because you are obviously using English that's not your native language, like for me. And also you're now you're finding phrasal verbs in Italian, they're not really phrasal verbs, but you know, similar. Farcela, farcela. Well, you know fare, to do, to make. C'è, let's say there, and then la, it. To make it there means nothing. So don't translate it because it means nothing. Farcela means to be able to, to manage, to do something, to succeed in something. Okay? Vederci, vedere, to see. Vederci, to be able to see as in not being blind. Okay? So crazy meanings. All because we added she. How wonderful is that? So here are some examples, and I'm just going to read them quickly, give you a translation, but I really encourage you to download the PDF where I will explain and give you a translation for all of them. This episode is humongous, so apologies if this is boring you. You shouldn't. If you're learning, you should be able to put up with a 20-minute video if you're really wanting to learn a language. Anyway, but Credi a Fantasmi? Credi ai fantasmi? Do you believe in ghosts? No, non ci credo. No, non ci credo. No, I don't believe in them. So that she means in them. Okay? But we didn't say that she could mean in them. That's because we're dealing with the verb crederci, which means to believe in something. So you're going to have to say ci credo, whether it's ai fantasmi or singular, whatever you believe in anything. It's going to be non ci credo. Next one. Quanto ci mette il treno per arrivare a Firenze? Quanto ci mette il treno per arrivare a Firenze? How long does the train take to get to Florence? So, ci mette means takes in English. Think about it. When you say that the train takes 20 minutes, where is it taking the 20 minutes? It means nothing in English as well. We just get used to the fact that take means the time that it takes in that context. That's what you have to do with this verb and all the other ones that are going to come up. Ce l'ho con te? Perché mi hai mentito. Ce l'ho con te perché mi hai mentito. I'm upset with you because you lied to me. Ce l'ho con te means I'm angry at you, I'm upset. Okay, that kind of thing. Ce la fai a venire alla festa? This one is crazy. Ce la fai a venire alla festa? Well, that's actually not crazy because in English we can say, can you make it to the party? So it's like, can you make it to come to the party? So it's like, do you think you'll manage? Do you think you'll be able to come to the party? That's what it means. Ce la fai. And again, I don't have time to explain how it works. But Voglio aprire la finestra, ma non ce la faccio. Voglio aprire la finestra. I want to open the window. Ma non ce la faccio. But I can't, meaning I'm not able to. I'm not managing. I'm not succeeding. So actually, farcela is often a verb that we use instead of can. Uh, whenever you're thinking can, sometimes in Italian we'll use farcela to translate can, as in to be able to do something, you know, to manage. Ma che non ci vedi? If somebody, if you're driving and somebody cuts you off and you say, ma che non ci vedi? What, can't you see? As in, are you blind? That's what that means. 
It doesn't mean, don't you see us? It means, are you blind? There you go. Or, are you not blind? Or, are you blind yet? Di sera non ci vedo molto bene. That's my story. Di sera non ci vedo molto bene. So at night, I can't see too well. See, I'm not going to say io non posso vedere, like an English speaker would probably say, if I can't see. It's just simply, non ci vedo, I don't see. With using the verb that means to be able to see. So, wow. If you made it to the end, you definitely deserve a reward, which you will find at italymadeeasy.com. And that's the PDF for this lesson. Also some exercises for you to practice and see if you get these things, if you understand some sentences, if you can create some sentences. And next week you will find the answers in the next PDF. And you will find it. And this week you will find the answers to last week's episode. If you had the time to watch it, otherwise do watch it now because it's really good. Uh, anyway, grazie mille ragazzi. Um, what to say, it's been a very a good pleasure to be with you and to help you out. You are, I hope this helped you and helped uh, anybody else who was interested in this. If you are watching this on YouTube, please subscribe and catch up with the other episodes of Ask Man Italiano by clicking on it. If you're already on the website, have fun. There's so much good stuff and it's growing and growing and growing and growing. Sempre più grande, sempre più bello e spero sempre più utile. I hope it's also more and more useful to you guys. And like I said, be ready for some amazing Italian content with subtitles so you can finally hear me help you with Italian uh, uh, melody, pronunciation, vocabulary, all in Italian. But I will always be explaining the grammar in English because that's what you should be doing. So, so yeah, that's it. It's done for me. Now go, go, prosper. Andate a mangiare, andate a studiare, andate a dormire, andate al mare, andate a letto e ci vediamo la prossima volta. Ciao, ciao.